The basic goal of any effective hazard communication program is to ensure the safety of the employee who works with and around different hazardous chemicals. Each and every workday, over 30 million workers in the U.S. are potentially exposed to a chemical hazard. Exposure to chemicals can cause serious physical and health problems. In order for employees to be safe when working with chemicals, information must be transmitted to them about the identities and hazards of the chemicals. This training program was created to assist companies in training employees concerning chemical products and the hazards they could potentially present. The main focus of this video is the chemical label. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, created the Hazard Communication Standard 29 CFR 1910.1200, or HCS, to specify the different measures and precautions employers must take to communicate and train employees about chemical safety and chemicals in their workplace. The standard is based on a simple concept. Employees have both a need and a right to know the hazards and identities of the chemicals to which they are exposed when working. The requirements of the HCS are intended to be consistent with the provisions of the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals. This worldwide system provides for more consistent and uniform classification and identification of chemicals and their potential hazards, creating a safer workplace for all employees. It is important to note that the HCS is a requirement and requires employers to maintain both safety data sheets and proper labels. As part of OSHA's HCS, a list of all hazardous chemicals in the workplace must be created, kept updated, and made available to all employees. Additionally, chemical labels and safety data sheets, or SDSs, should be obtained for each hazardous chemical used and made readily available to all employees. The OSHA mandated SDS is a standardized 16 section detailed information bulletin prepared by the manufacturer or importer of a chemical which describes the chemical. The SDS provides information about various aspects concerning the chemical, including hazards, handling measures, and safety precautions, such as PPE. SDSs should automatically be provided by the manufacturer at the time of the initial shipment. The list of hazardous chemicals should be cross-referenced with the safety data sheets to ensure the list and the safety data sheets are accurate and correctly reflect the number of hazardous chemicals in the workplace. Hazard information must be communicated to employees. Employers must establish and implement a written hazard communication program covering the list of chemicals, use of labels, safety data sheets, and employee training. This program should outline the different policies and procedures the employee has in place to keep employees safe and ensure adherence to the HCS. The HCS also requires employers to provide equipment and training concerning protective measures to prevent exposure to chemicals and reduce the risk of working with hazardous chemicals. The HCS does not apply to consumer products such as window cleaner, toilet bowl cleaner, and dishwashing liquid when used in the workplace in the same manner and with the same duration and frequency that a normal household consumer would use them at home. OSHA recognizes the dangers of chemicals when used improperly and or when employees don't realize the dangers due to lack of knowledge. The HCS is designed to eliminate potential dangers by ensuring employees have the information necessary to protect themselves and their co-workers. As stated earlier, the information is provided in two forms. 
safety data sheets, and chemical labels. Labels provide quick, important information about a chemical which could save you or a coworker's life. A label is effective in immediately communicating health and physical hazards, as well as how to minimize or prevent adverse effects resulting from exposure to the hazardous chemical or improper storage or handling. Labels are affixed to, printed on, or attached to the container of a hazardous chemical or on the outside packaging. Chemical manufacturers, importers, and distributors are responsible for labeling, tagging, or marking each container. OSHA mandated Apex C of the HCS to guide them on the correct information to place on chemical labels. The label must be prominently displayed in English on each container and must include the name, address, and telephone number of the manufacturer, importer, or other responsible party. Employees should know how to read chemical labels and understand the information presented before dealing with hazardous chemicals. All labels should be read by the employee before each use. As mandated by OSHA, certain information is required on all chemical labels. The minimum requirements are the following. A product identifier, which is the unique name or number used to identify a hazardous chemical. The same product identifier must be used for the label, SDS, and required company chemical list for each chemical. A signal word, a word used to alert employees of a potential hazard and its relative level of severity. Two signal words used are danger, used for more severe hazards, and warning, used for the less severe hazards. Only one word will be present on a label. If danger is included, then warning should not appear. A hazard statement, a statement describing the nature of the chemical hazard, including, where appropriate, the degree of hazard. Statements such as fatal if swallowed, toxic if swallowed, and causes severe skin burns and eye damage are some examples of hazard statements. A pictogram, a composition which is intended to convey specific health and physical hazard information about the chemical. OSHA has mandated eight specific pictograms to be used on chemical labels. A ninth pictogram is part of GHS, but not mandated by OSHA, as the area it covers is regulated by a different governmental agency. Each pictogram is in the shape of a red square set at point and includes a black hazard symbol on a white background with a red frame sufficiently wide to be clearly visible. The nine pictograms and the associated hazards are flame over circle, used to indicate an oxidizer. Flame, which is for flammables, pyrophorics, self-heating, emits flammable gas, self-reactive, organic peroxides. Exploding bomb, indicates explosives, self-reactives, organic peroxides. Skull and crossbones, used for severe acute toxicity. Corrosion, used to indicate skin, corrosion or burns, and eye damage, also indicates corrosive to metals. Gas cylinder, for gases under pressure. Health hazard, used for chemicals that can affect your health, such as carcinogens, mutagenicity, reproductive toxicity, respiratory sensitizer, target organ toxicity, aspiration toxicity. Exclamation point, indicating an irritant, skin sensitizer, harmful acute toxicity, narcotic effects, respiratory tract irritation. Environment, which is currently non-mandatory concerning OSHA. This pictogram conveys aquatic toxicity. Each label and SDS must have a precautionary statement, a phrase describing recommended measures to be taken to minimize or prevent adverse effects resulting from exposure to the hazardous chemical or improper storage and handling. There are four types of precautionary statements used on labels. 
The four types of statements are prevention, response, storage, and disposal. Prevention statements are meant to keep you from harm, such as do not eat, drink, or smoke when using this product or wear protective gloves. Response. Statements providing steps to take if you have been exposed to a chemical hazard. If on skin, gently wash with plenty of soap and water or immediately call a poison center or doctor slash physician are examples of response statements. Storage. Explains the safe way to store the chemical. Store locked up and store in a well-ventilated place. Keep container tightly closed are statements you might see in this section of the label. Disposal. The last statement explains to the employer or employee how to dispose of the chemical safely. Dispose of contents in accordance with local, regional, national, international regulations is an example of a disposal statement you might see on a label. Sometimes manufacturers, importers, or distributors may choose to add supplementary information to the label when it provides further details and does not contradict or cast doubt on the validity of the standardized hazard information. If the hazardous chemical is transferred by the employer from the primary container to a secondary container, the employer must label the secondary container. Employers are responsible for ensuring each container of hazardous chemicals in the workplace is labeled, tagged, or marked with the appropriate information. Workplace labels must be legible, in English, and prominently displayed on the container. Other languages may be used as long as the information is presented in English as well. There is no requirement to have labels in other languages. Employees may transfer a hazardous chemical from a labeled container to a non-labeled portable container as long as it is for the employee's immediate use and the portable container never leaves the employee's possession. For stationary process containers such as storage tanks, employers may use signs, placards, process sheets, batch tickets, operating procedures, or other written materials in lieu of affixing labels. This alternative method must identify the containers to which it is applicable and convey the information required on secondary containers. The written materials must be readily accessible to employees in their work area throughout each work shift. OSHA considers solids to be chemicals and they are covered by HCS. For such items such as solid metal, solid wood, plastic items, or shipments of whole grain, the required label may be transmitted to the customer at the time of initial shipment or with the SDS that is to be provided prior to or at the time of the initial shipment. Labels need not be included with subsequent shipments to the same customer unless the information on the label or chemical changes. This exception to requiring labels on every container of hazardous chemicals is only for the solid material itself and not on other chemical shipments. Additional information about labeling requirements is in the OSHA mandate CFR 1910.1200 HCS and appendices. Your safety depends upon a thorough knowledge and understanding of the dangers and hazards associated with the chemicals you work with and to which you are exposed. OSHA requires manufacturers, importers, and distributors to label chemical containers for your safety. Be sure you know where to find the label, how to read it, and understand the information it contains. If you have any doubts or questions, contact your supervisor immediately. Always work safe and be safe.